critical moment tonight in the race to be California's next governor. The only debate featuring all of the major candidates before the June 5th primary. And of course they went after each other on Donald Trump, immigration, even sexual affairs. Kick on I political reporter Dave Bryan joins us now with what many call the race for the second spot on that ballot. It has Ooh. tightened up in the last few weeks, hasn't it? Well, it has. Uh, the, the leader still has a big lead, but then everybody else is packed in for second. That's really what uh, that's about. Polls show Gavin Newsom way out in front heading into the primary. He's so far ahead, he hasn't attended a debate in two months and won't again before June 5th. Many believe tonight's debate was a chance for the rest of the pack to score points and clinch the second spot on the November ballot. It's not about uh, grandmothers uh, being pulled out of their homes. In the last scheduled debate among the major candidates for governor before the June 5th primary, the issue that raised the biggest conflicts was immigration, which pitted Republicans John Cox and Travis Allen against Gavin Newsom and the Democrats. I don't want to live next to MS-13 members. I don't think any of us do. And I th well, the first thing I'll do is reverse Gavin Newsom's uh, sanctuary state law. One thing uh, I'm going to do is push back against John Cox, Travis Allen, and Donald Trump. Trump and Trumpism. This is the kind of, you know, rhetoric that has no place in California. And when Huntington Beach Republican State Assemblyman Travis Allen blamed former San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom, who's currently leading all the other candidates by a wide margin in the latest polls, for the killing of a young female tourist in that city, the sparks really started to fly. Her name was Kate Steinle. She was walking down the pier in San Francisco with her father and was shot in the back by someone who had been deported five times and who was a seven-time felon, who had been released just three months earlier due to the sanctuary city policies of Gavin Newsom and the California Democrats. I you know, find that offensive to politicize the death, the tragic death of Kate Steinle. I have, I have four kids. <laughs> Nothing breaks my heart more than a young child taking a last breath with her father that couldn't help her. And with all due respect, Travis, uh, that was a complicated issue. That was a preventable tragedy, and it is much more complicated than just looking at it through the prism, the stale prism uh, of the politics that you're trying to espouse around sanctuary policy. And at one point in the immigration debate, it was Republican hammering Republican on the issue of driver's licenses for undocumented immigrants. My Republican opponent didn't even vote for the opposition to uh, uh, giving driver's license to illegal immigrants. That's, that's a so, lie, John. No, go check the vote go record. To, go, to, go to Truth About Travis. Go, go, go to VoteSmart.org, buddy. Go to Truth Against Travis. <laughs> All right. This is what politicians do. John, maybe interrupt. if you could okay. actually learn to use the no, internet, you'd no, understand. To... Later, Democrat Delane Easton made a fiery statement on the issue of character in politics aimed at a couple of fellow Democrats who had extramarital affairs. What's missing is courage and vision and heart and a sense of self-control that makes certain that you are focused on the issues at hand and not on how much fun you can have. And at the end of the day, it is inappropriate for any boss in any business or any government agency to make passes at women that work for them. And when that happens, it ought to be given a shout out. And the affairs of Antonio Villaraigosa, and certainly then the affairs of uh, Gavin Newsom, the, the question is very simple, ladies and gentlemen. If you can't trust Gavin with his best friend's wife, how can you trust him with your state? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard with respect to, to hear from Mr. Allen, who's a devout supporter of Donald Trump, talk about the issue of sexual harassment. Um, and as it relates to the, the issue that's been referred to, I, I was honest about it. I was open about it. I apologize for it. I was wrong. And I've learned an enormous amount from it. And I'm a much better person as a consequence. I stand with the Me Too movement. Uh, and I also acknowledge uh, that I made a mistake. Uh, I lost my marriage. Uh, I lost my family for a time. I took responsibility for it. All the Democrats presented themselves as best fit to fight back against President Donald Trump. Perhaps none more testily than Delaine Easton, who didn't mince words when she got fired up. I have never seen a racist misogynist lead my nation as this man has. And I believe that the state of California needs to stand tall. And State Treasurer John Chung, who was not engaged in most of the verbal clashes throughout the night, won some applause for his strong stand on expanding education. We have to make sure that every child, regardless of community, social, economic status, faith, gets the opportunity for a world-class education. That's the prospect and the hopes of California. Now, tonight's debate took on even more impact because the absentee ballots are being sent out this week, and many voters will be filling them out long before the campaign winds up. And for that reason, most of the major candidates are filling the airwaves and social media websites and, and radio with waves of candidate ads to get their message across to those 
early voters. Jeff, Lena, it was quite a night. It certainly was, David. Thank you so much. Sure.